Hi guys and welcome back. We are now into episode 8 and in this episode you're in for a treat. We're gonna do variations of the world famous Sunray Shadow and I think anyone who's fished for salmon more than a season has probably heard of this fly and probably has a variation or two in, in their fly box and if you don't have this fly in your fly box you should. The Sunray Shadow is extremely effective and it's mostly famous uh, using them pretty big. It's a big fly originally, but you can tie it in many many different ways. Unweighted, with weight, uh, big, small. And I'm going to show you three different ways uh, to tie uh, variations of Sunray. And of course uh, including the original Sunray Shadow pattern as well. So, let's start. Okay, the first variation we're going to tie here is extremely simple and super fast. So, if you go run to the bathroom or anything, you will miss it. It's that fast. 3mm tube, cut to a decent size or adjustable size to the fly that you will tie. I will show you when both all flies are done, how to make the tube the right length. So... Okay, attach the thread, take a piece of black hair, fox hair or any other soft hair you prefer. Just cut one wing out like so. And do your taper work by pulling away through a few extra stra uh, strands of hair. Measure it out and then cut it here. And then, as usual with uh, soft hair, I always tie it reversed. Always, 99% of the time I do the reverse technique. Uh, gives a little bit of support, that little extra hair you get there. And the most benefit with this is that the wing is uh, extra strong because it's attached twice and you have nothing you need to clean here. That's the fly. It's nothing else than this. Do your whip finish or glue on your thread or whatever your personal preference of uh, finishing a fly is. Then cut your thread. It doesn't need to be more difficult than this. This might look ridiculously simple. You can of course do a little bit glue here to make the head look pretty. But I just wanted to show how simple it can be. If you do these in a few sizes, uh, those days or weeks you're fishing for Atlantic or even Baltic salmon, when it's extremely tricky, please promise me to try flies like these. I have a, a few of those in my box, sometimes no weighted like this or sometimes just directly on a US tube. Uh, I promise you this will give you more fish than you would you would imagine all right but now we're going to tie a little bit more traditional uh sunray shadow once again it's a three millimeter tube as you can see here there's a little bit of black spot here on my needle a lot of these tube needles are a little bit too thin to make this three millimeter stick properly so what i've done there is just adding a little bit of thread and glue to make that stop there and all of these tubes are pretty flexible, so they can stand it without any problem. And then I'm using a black thread again. Attaching it relatively close to where I'm going to finish the fly. It's good to have a little bit thread beneath here as a foundation. If it's too little, materials tend to uh, slide and glide on the hook or tube. Uh, the original Sunray Shadow uh, is made with squirrel and peacock hurl and monkey hair that's the classic raymond brooks fly and he had a few variations of course the most famous one that we are referring to as sunray today is most of the times used uh, with bucktail and goat or any other black uh, hair that's a little bit stiffer uh, i tend to use fox and goat in the top wing we'll get to that uh, take most of the times the best hair for salmon flies on a bucktail is from the top and up. These are a little bit 
more hollow and tend to have air in it. More suitable for big streamers, pike flies. Uh, in my opinion, you should work in this area for salmon flies. And you can see on this green one up here in the top, you have very, very thin, nice fibers and perfect for salmon flies. We'll get to that green one later and you can, of course, uh, choose any color you want. I'm using the little bit more traditional one here, white and black. This one, uh, bucktail and polar bear and hairs like that and squirrel stiff hairs, I don't uh, tie reversed. I don't uh, put it forward and then backwards. I just tie it straight onto the tube to the same uh, mount that I've tied before, as you can see, the, the pre-wrapping of the tube. And that's that. What I'm going to do now is add one or two strands of angel hair, silver, which I'm going to uh, fold double. And we'll see what we get out of this. Worst case, you cut it. Like so. One too many. I rarely use a lot of flash. I'd rather have a little bit too little than too much. Of course, you can always take away easier than you add. So if you are a little bit insecure on how much, add a little bit. And if it seems to be too much, you can always remove it when you're uh, by the river. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is put a little bit of glue on the thread and then a little bit on that edge and then I'm just putting it back there. The reason why I want a few laps of glue here is before I cut with the razor blade and that glue will make sure that that wing doesn't go anywhere. It would suck if you come out to the river and pull in your wing and all that bucktail comes out. You don't want that so just for the safety of it add a few uh, drops of glue. Right, that's the foundation work. Now you take your uh, top wing, uh, in this case fox hair, and I have the, of course the benefit of choosing hair. Uh, since I do this for a living and I sell a lot of hair, I have the possibility to choose. Uh, because not all hair is suitable for all flies. Softer hair tends to be better for smaller flies or classic Scandi tube flies with a lot of body hackle and stuff like that. A sun ray that doesn't have anything else to support the wing except for the bucktail, you should use hair that's a little bit stiffer, a little bit more uh, form holding. And then you measure your wing like so, then adjust here. This one should be uh, around half in length of the white one in my opinion this is personal preferences this one of course I'm doing reversed because this is a way softer hair than that one and the reason why these two work so good together is that the stiff bucktail will help keep that softer fox in shape strong strong current uh, with just soft materials will make that wing collapse if you don't have bucktail or squirrel or anything beneath. You can already now see how that helps to keep the shape. It doesn't collapse really. If you have fished a few seasons for salmon, you know what I'm talking about. When you go for a run and in the end of the uh, pool, half your wing is stuck to your hook. That means that something is wrong with the material. You need to add a little bit stiffer materials to your fly. Sometimes you can add a little bit of glue to the treble in the, or the double hook to make the uh, hairs not get stuck as much, but it doesn't really fix the problem. It's, a, it's like a band-aid, in my opinion. Uh, what I've done here is bucktail, we have fox hair, but I'm gonna add a little bit of goat because it has a little bit more shiny structure and it's a little bit stiffer it. and also most of the times you can find goat in those really really long hairs if you want to make a really big sunray. I personally think it fishes really really good 
as a classic Sunray around 12, 13 centimeters. The original one is about 13 and a half, if I'm not mistaken. In my, I don't think you need to be that accurate, but. Uh, what I'm gonna do now, you see I have a little bit here, it's not really fixed yet. I'm taking a few away and I'm gonna remove the longest ones here. Because I just wanna add a little bit extra to what I have. And I'm cutting, cleaning this one, the attachment point, and reversing this one. This is goat, good quality goat is stiff, but it's not bucktail stiff. It shouldn't be. It, it doesn't really give you a good shape of the wing if it's too stiff. So, and then I'm folding this one over. Covering a little bit more of that white stuff there. And shaping this like so. Take the brush and just comb through and make sure it looks all right. I think we're pretty set here. So that's the Sunray. This would most people call relatively classic Sunray shadow. It's not the exact classic sunray sh shadow but it's a variation of the sunray and this one should be in every salmon anglers box in my opinion and this one of course you can do a lot of glue work you can put uv glue on uh, varnish you can also of course just add a little bit more glue to your needle these heads that you get on a sunray is pretty big so you can if you're a little bit careful, just put glue directly onto that. It's a little bit easier in my opinion. And then just take your needle and make it go around to cover everything. And that's it. Make sure uh, or make a note here because I'm going to show you when this has dried. Uh, this axis is, of course, going to get cut off and you're going to burn a small little edge there. But I will show you when that has dried. I'm going to tie the last variation uh, of a sunray very shortly as well. But this is a classic, a little bit more classic variation of the sunray. And extremely efficient. The tube goes to about, if you add a hook to that, I'm going to just put it like this. It's a little bit easier for me to demonstrate what I want to show you. When you add a hook here, it's going to be more or less in the middle of the fly, which is totally fine when you're fishing for salmon, because the salmon tends to take the fly like this when it swings around. Steelhead or sea trout, because we're fishing the fly from this angle, on a dangle more. Salmon, we're fishing it swinging through more across the current. Sea trout is more like this, and they go like this. Same with steelhead. That means that we need to have the hook back here. That's not the case with Atlantic salmon. You don't have to worry about, oh, is the hook all the way back? Should it be further back? If you add, <coughs> excuse me, if you add a longer tube to this, it's just going to be more difficult to cast. So you don't need a long, long tube on your salmon flies. You, uh, I personally believe you, that you don't. Uh, of course, there's maybe cases when that happens, but very, very seldom. Okay, the last one I'm going to make uh, is a little bit pimped up. Uh, normally, what, if you have seen my previous videos, you know that I uh, burn an edge on a thin tube, a uh, drip of glue, and then put on a US tube and then tie in front of it. You can do this with that this fly as well. I just don't think it looks that good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut... Uh, cut that off and take the lighter and make sure that this burns down to an edge on that side as well because we're going to tie directly to the metal so this is a 15 millimeter tube you can of course use a smaller one when you're making smaller variations of this fly I'm showing you now there we go I'm going all the way back here 
You can if you want to uh, uh, go further back. I normally leave a little bit of metal. Clean surface you want if you want to add a steering uh, holding tube, a silicone tube or something like that. I fish it on the dangle. That means that the hook is not uh, set to the tube. It's free hanging and as soon as that hits the water, um, it will the, the hook will be in the back of the fly anyway. What I've added here is a flat braid pearl or pearl flat braid in a color of green, which is my favorite uh, color when I'm doing this fly that I'm going to show you. I've of course made it in a few colors. The green one has been very efficient and feels good when I use it. Make sure that this covers everything and I'm putting each wrap just on top of the other one so there's no ugly gaps showing thread but I'm not adding it uh, so tight that the body gets bulky you don't want that either the only negative thing in tying like this and not down onto the thin tube is that now you need to have your measurements in order because if the tube is done it's done you can't go further than that well you can try but it's not going to be successful okay there you go that's a little bit annoying i'm going to cut that off apparently not let's see that's good enough uh, you can use choose any color you want now the green bucktail makes its enter. I'm gonna take a small little wing here, cutting it all the way down, even though I'm not gonna use all of this length. Just adding it to it like so. <laughs> Making sure I have space. And if you want, once again, you can add the strand of angel hair and fold that double. You can, of course, make this fly without this bucktail, uh, but I think this adds a little bit extra. This is the one without, it's just that green and a black wing and some young cock if you want that to pimp it up even more I will not use it on the, this one but I just wanted to show you this one as well extremely efficient simple flies which will make your fly tying life and salmon fishing life a little bit easier or a little bit simpler at least salmon fishing is never really easy in that sense because it takes so much time there's so many unfortunate trips until you get that successful one, depending on how you see it. Of course, I mean, a day spent by the river is always a nice day. But if we, those dream weeks that we keep talking about 10 years later, don't occur that often. Uh, but if you have minimized everything else, but not thinking too much about the fly, that's one Thing less to stress about. Now I'm gonna add fox hair, black wing, surprise, that I'm using black in my salmon flies. Uh, take away a little bit of excess hair, hair. Make sure that it's good in length. This wing will be a little bit more uh, tapered towards the green one if you think about uh, more of a traditional salmon wing in a, in a tube fly this is not going to be like the other one uh, sun ray like half of the wing it's going to be a little bit more going in in taper with that okay it's clean cut remember what side is what what's upside down where's the short hair where's the long hair when you do this reverse technique i'm adding that be careful so it doesn't fall down it's very easy for it to fall down from the US tube then you fold it it 
these parts that I'm the only I said the only negative thing is the uh, distance here that's partially true though this is also a little bit trickier now because we only have that little space to work with it's very easy for that to fall down in between the US tube and the plastic there that makes it a little bit more you have to be a little bit more uh, thorough when you are doing this so there we go that's that and I'm gonna finish it by adding a little bit of glue then you just cut it off there so and then you pinch that in before it gets uh, hardened and then you if you want to make a nice looking head i mean it, it's doable for fishing of course i'm just gonna cut that little strand away uh, take your in this scenario i wouldn't recommend to put your uh, glue that close to the wing and everything so I'm adding a little drip to the needle there I'm just gonna go all the way around here a little bit more and as usual you can add that UV glue as you've seen in my previous clips as well I'm not gonna do that on this one not now at least because I'm gonna show you the how to finish the second fly that we tied, the, sun, the original sun ring. But I'm just making sure that this covers everything. You can read a little bit more about the original sun ray and these flies and a little bit of personal look backs to my my personal experience with the sunray variations and the original sunray as well because i personally didn't want to fish it for several years in my the beginning and uh, because i thought the sunray was too simple to tie uh, that's why i thought it was not a good enough fly for salmon but oh my god i've eaten my words but you can read more about it in the blog and everything is in the description as well as finding the materials and a little bit more of uh, the stuff that we do so this is the pimped up one and i've this is one of my favorite flies for uh, rivers like orkla gaula especially on sunny days clear water conditions even though they are a little bit peaty they do have a, a scent of green tone in in some conditions uh, when it hasn't flooded for a long time and and this fly really has given me so many nice memories but i'm going to just show you the final uh thing with this original sunray variations that's fly number two but as you can see these flies if you add a jungle cock to these the, this will look very very good but it's a very simple fly still looks good and this fish is great there's nothing hackle or anything in the way this sinks pretty good if you want it to because it's so slim have that in mind when you add weight to fly and have the idea of the fly should sink the more material you add over the metal the more sinking effect you will lose the cleaner the tube is and the less material you have obviously it will sink more less resistant in the water all right the final thing with the sun ring then i will let you go and i hope you tune in again of course this is the original sunray we saw it before you see the nice wing profile here you can see how that bucktail really helps to keep the shape you see i've cut that off now you can leave it at like this or you just go with your lighter and a small little dab dab to make that looks look a little bit better then if you want to you can really make sure that that presses up because this is a soft tube relatively soft and you're adding a lot of pressure to a very small spot so if you do what i'm doing now directly after you burn it you can see that that eye is very nice big and open okay 
Thank you for tuning in, and please, uh, if you ever try that crazy simple one, send me some information or, or a big green pitcher with a nice salmon catch. Thanks for watching.